Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. It's a victory day, and we've got victory at home. Put it in the chat. It's a victory day, and we've got victory at home. And this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, wherever your house is. Put it in the chat. That's the house of the Lord. Come on, put it in the chat. My house is the house of the Lord. And we are so honored and delighted that you decided to join us from whatever planet, whatever place you are. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for zooming in, tuning in, and connecting and joining us on today. I'm excited about the Word of God. I started a series of sermon entitled, my goodness, The Fruit of the Spirit. The Fruit of the Spirit. But before we go Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for showing up in this midst. Thank you for meeting us at this appointed place, at this appointed time. Now, God, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For indeed, you are walking our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Read in particular at verse number 13. All right. Let me know you can hear me because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Galatians chapter 5, reading at verse number 13, it reads as follow from the New International Version. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bit and devour each other, watch out or you will destroy each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict. Somebody put the word conflict in chat. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not able to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, and more impurity, barbarity, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, friction, envy, and drunk drunkenness and orgies, as the like I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But, somebody put in the chat, but. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desire. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. The Word of God for the people of God. If you're able to put it, just go ahead and put thanks be to God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, but the acts of the flesh are obvious. In the time that I have on this second portion of sermon, this second installment, I want to preach and teach from the subject, the war within. Come on, give it back to me. The war within. Or the subtitle is tug of war, Uh, tug of war, or the war within. The vision of our church, VGC, is to develop victorious believers. We want to equip and empower and encourage you to have victory, number one, in your faith. If you ever put it in the chat, we want you to have victory in your faith. We want you to have victory in your family. We want you to have victory in your finances. And we want you to have victory in your flesh. And we want you to have victory in all 
all of those areas at home. Come on, put it in the chat, victory at home. This is why this year we have declared and believe that God is going to release victory, my goodness, in all of those areas, and it's going to start at home. Well, how do we get victory, particularly in our flesh, is what this sermon, these series of sermons are to help you. The series of sermon that we're preaching for the next couple of weeks is to equip you, empower you, and encourage you to have victory in your flesh. So last week, we started a series of message on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Our focus is not on the gifts of the Spirit. Our focus is not, my goodness, not only not on the gifts of the Spirit, our focus is not even on the works of the Spirit, but rather our focus is on the fruit of the Spirit. Give me the word fruit. We learned last week that our job is to stay connected to the vine from John chapter 15. So the Spirit can produce these fruits in you and I. John chapter 15 talks about Dr. Butler, that if we abide in him and he abide in us, Minister Christian Gregg, that he's going to produce these fruits or these characters in our lives. These are the fruits or the character of the Holy Spirit or what the Holy Spirit wants to produce in our lives. We know that there are nine. Give me the number nine. If you can, we know that there are nine different fruits of the spirit, just like the fruit of an orange. There are numerous slices. Each slice is one aspect of the fruit of the spirit. Notice, Minister Shannon, notice, Pastor Shannon, that the word, the fruit of the spirit or the word fruit is not in its pure, but rather singular. It is not fruits of the spirit. It's fruit of the spirit. It is one fruit that is manifested in nine different characteristic or qualities. In other words, when I have the spirit, when I have the spirit, When I have the Spirit, I can expect these nine different qualities to be manifested in my life. Well, before we get deep into the scripture, how many of you, your mother at least told you that you need to eat at least five fruits a day? Come on, put it in the chat. How many of you, you grew up, my mother, Miss Janet Shepard, will often tell me, she said a fruit a day will keep sickness away. Come on, put it in the chat. She said, a fruit a day will keep diseases away. And Miss Shepherd taught me how to make sure that every morning I eat at least five fruits a day. Can you put it in the chat? Which one is your favorite food that you like to eat every morning? For me, I always have a banana and then I have some blueberries and some strawberries. I'm not too keen about blackberries, but at least I have have a banana and I have some strawberries or at least some blueberries. When I was on my island Trinidad, we will always have mangoes. Any mango lovers out there, I see you putting it, put it in the chat. What is your favorite fruit that you like to at least eat every day? And while our parents or our grandparents or whoever it is taught us that you and I need to have at least five fruits a day. Paul teaches you and I, you actually need nine. How many you need? Come on. Yes, my goodness. Our mama taught us that you need at least five fruits a day. But Paul teach you and I that we need at least how many, Jessica? We need at least nine fruits a day. Now, let's lay the groundwork on understanding how fruits are manifested in our lives. We know how a fruit is produced. It starts with a seed. Somebody put it in the chat. I've got a seed in the ground. It starts with a seed. In fact, everything begins with a seed. What did I say? Everything begins with a seed. Your life started with a seed. Everything begins with a seed. Whatever you see, whenever you see a tree, whenever you see something produce, it starts with what? It starts with a seed. If I had time, I would teach you and I the power of a seed. What would I teach you? The what? The power 
power of a seed. You see, that's important because seeds are so important that seeds have the potential to grow into a tree. My God, there's a word for somebody right there. I said a seed dungeon has the potential to grow into a tree. It can be a seed of thought. It can be an idea, a seed or idea has the potential to grow into a tree. And so the Bible tells us that the seed that is planted within us at the point of redemption is the word. Come on, put it in the chat. The word of God is the seed. Every time I preach or every time you tune in or every time you're listening to me, I am planting a seed in you. Who am I talking to? Every time the word is preached, my goodness, it's a seed. The word of God is a seed. In fact, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse number 23 said, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 said, that for you, you have been born again not of perishable seed, but imperishable through the living and the enduring word of God. Would you put it in the chat? There's a seed in me. Come on. There is a seed in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever the word and whenever the enemy shows up, sister, to Sonia. Whenever the enemy shows up, he shows up to steal the seed. My God. The enemy's not after your car. He's not after your house. He's not after your spouse. He's not after your job. He's after the seed that's been planted by the word of God. I wish somebody would put it in the chat. Devil, you can have everything else, but you can't have my seed. Come on, put it in the chat. I will not eat my seed. I will not, my goodness, spend my seed. I will not bury my seed, but I'm going to live on the seed of the word. My goodness. Who am I talking to who said I'm going to live on the seed of the word of God? The word says that my God shall supply all my, come on, supply all my needs according to his riches in the word of God. Come on, put it in the chat. I'm eating that seed. He said, I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous no speaking. No, his seed begging bread. Come on, say, I'm eating that seed. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Come I'll put it in the chat. I'm eating that seed. My God, my God. Now, I want to encourage you to hold on to the word of God, which is a seed that's been planted in your life. That's what 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23, it teaches you and I that the birth of the believer, it began with a seed. Everything begins with a seed. And Paul, just like your mama, Paul, just like your mama, understand the importance of fruit. My God. Paul, just like your mama, understood the importance of fruit. Uh, and all of us know that fruit is wonderful and is healthy and good for you. How many of y'all know you can convince your children to eat Popeyes? You can convince them to eat fries? You can convince them to eat McDonald's? And it's difficult to get them to eat some fruit. I wish somebody would put it in the chat, my God. I said, you can convince your children to eat everything. You can convince, even you can convince yourself. Talking about you don't like fruit and you don't like vegetables and you don't like water. That's a trick of the enemy. Don't you know that the enemy wants you to live unhealthy in your flesh? My goodness, your body craves for water. Your body craves for fruit. Your body craves for vegetable. Who am I talking to? How is it that it's easy to eat everything unhealthy? It's easy to eat cookies. Can I preach up in here? It's easy to eat everything unhealthy, but as soon as you start eating something healthy, something shifts inside of you because the enemy understands even in the natural, the importance of 
fruits and vegetables. Fruit is wonderful and healthy and good for you. Put it in the chat. It's good for me. Uh. Put it in the chat. Uh, and put in the chat once again what your favorite fruit or vegetable is. Paul uses the word fruit to describe the wonderful things the Holy Spirit wants to produce in our lives. That's a word for somebody that when the Holy Spirit takes a resident in my life, he wants to produce something wonderful. Stephanie, don't miss that. What did I say? Put it in the chat, Solomon, that the Holy Spirit shows up in my life to produce something wonderful. God shows up in my life to produce something wonderful, to produce something marvelous. And Paul starts off first, I'm in Galatians chapter 5, Paul starts off first by showing us a contrast between the works of the flesh or what the flesh wants to produce in us and the fruit of the spirit, all right? The works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. Paul tells you and I that our flesh wants to produce something and our spirit wants to produce something in us. Paul in doing so reminds you and I, Deacon Brian, he reminds you and I that we are in a tug of war. Give it back to me. What are we in? Paul reminds you and I that there is a tug of war, John John, between my flesh and my spirit. Put a heart over your head. Let me know you can still hear me. Paul says that there is a tug of war between my flesh and my spirit. Uh, he said there is a war between what my flesh won and what my spirit won. Uh, he then goes on in Galatians chapter 5. Uh, he then goes on to list the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. Uh, and then he ends by explaining to us how we can achieve victory and maintain our balance. Let's first look at the conflict within. What did I say? Let's first look at the conflict within. Paul says that there is a conflict within us. Come on, put it in the chat. There's a conflict within me. There is a war within me. There is a tug of war that is going on within me. Christians are human battlegrounds. I don't want you to miss it. And raging inside of us is a war between our sinful nature and the Holy Spirit. Uh, within all of us, there is a battle between the save and the sanctify me uh, and uh, and the used to be sinner me. Come on. Uh, he said in verse number 17, Deacon Rick, uh, he said for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. Did y'all catch that? Put a heart over your head. Let me know you can hear me or put it in the chat so I can know you can hear me. All right. Or oh, give me some pounds, brothers out there. Give me some pounds. He said in verse 17, the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict. Give me that word conflict again. They are in conflict with each other so you are not able to do whatever you you want. And Nikki, I've learned something. Uh, whenever there is internal conflict, there is always going to be external conflict. Ah, uh, Y'all got to catch it. What did I say? Whenever there is internal conflict, John John, there is going to be external conflict. Uh, if you cannot be at peace with yourself, you won't be able to be at peace with anybody. Who am I talking to? If you cannot love yourself, you can't love nobody. If you can't have joy by yourself, you won't be able to have joy with anybody. Your issue is not your spouse. Your issue is the war within. Oh, God, come on, put it in the chat. I said your issue is not your boo. It's not your boaz. It's not your boet. Is that a word? Can I say that? It's not your boaz. It's not your boet. The issue is there is a war within and until you can win victory on the inside Google it's going to be hard to win victory on the outside 
Who am I talking to? My goodness, put it in the chat. I am believing God to give me victory within. So let's look at the conflict within. And the conflict within is between, listen to this, it is between the lower me and the higher me. What did I say? It's between the lower me and the higher me. It's between, it, it, it is between the lower me or the higher me. It's between my flesh and it's between between my spirit is between the good jazz and it's between the bad jazz it's between the positive and it's between the negative and Paul starts off and said he said but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law and Paul is saying that just because oh I need somebody to put it in the chat just because he said just because you're safe just because you're sanctified just because you're secure just because you speak in tongues does not mean that you are exempt from this tug of war oh my god my god he said just because you're safe just because you're sanctified does not mean that you are exempt come on put it in the chat I'm not exempt from the war within in fact Paul tells you and I that the very moment we became believers that we entered into a war zone come on put it in the chat I'm in a war zone I'm out in a war zone there is a tug of war Susan I'm in a I'm in a war zone my goodness internet there's a war within there's a tug of war within that's why Paul says in Romans chapter the seven he said when I want to do good John John I end up doing bad when I want to bless somebody I end up cussing them out on Facebook when I want to be kind I end up being mean when I I wish I had somebody out there put it in the chat Dr. Jazz you're talking to me Paul says that there is a war within me that is going on between the lesser me and the higher me there's a war within me between the old nature and the new nature. He said, just because you are in Christ does not mean that you are exempt. Uh, well, somebody just asked me in the chat, Pastor Lord, Pastor Jess, how long is this war within going to last? Uh, how long is there going to be a tug of war within me? Uh, it is going to last as long as you are alive. <laughs> Oh, come on, put it in. As long as you're alive. I don't care if you've been saved for 20 years. I don't care if you've been saved for 40 years. I don't care if you've been preaching for me like preaching like me for 30 years. There is always going to be a war within. There is always going to be a tug. Well, Pastor Jazz, what's the good news? The good news is you're going to have more victory than defeat. I need somebody to put it in the chat. You're going to have what? What did I say? You're going to have what? You're going to have more what? Victory than, put it in the chat, defeat. You're going to have more victory. Put it in the chat. I'm going to have more victory. I'm going to have more victory. That's the good news. I'm going to have more victory than defeat. I've come to tell somebody there is going to be what I call the there is going to be the thrill of victory. And yes, there are going to be some agony of defeat. But the more, listen, the more I surrender to the spirit and not serve my flesh. Oh, did y'all catch those two S's? The more I surrender to the spirit and the less I serve my flesh, I'm going to have more victory than defeat. Somebody ought to put it in the chat. The more I surrender to the spirit and the more I, I stop serving the flesh, I'm going to have more, I'm going to have more what? Victory than defeat. But as long as I am in this flesh, Deacon Bill Bibbs, I'm going to be battling with something. As long as I am in this flesh, Google, I am going to be dealing with something. Paul says in Galatians 5 verse 19 that the flesh produces works. Come on, give me the word works. He produces works. That word works in this text has to do with hard labor or hard work. Come on, put it in the chat. 
My goodness, whenever we look at the word works in Galatians 5, 19, it is referring to hard labor or hard work. He lists them, and when Paul lists the works of the flesh, he lists them in three categories. I'll give it to you. He lists them in three different categories. I'm in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 19. He lists them in three different categories. The first category, he says, he said, these are the works of the flesh. And you know what the revelation the Lord gave me? It is harder to produce the works of the flesh than to have the fruit of the spirit. Now, some of you don't believe that because it's so easy for you to fall into the works of the flesh. Whenever it's easy for you to fall into the works of the flesh, it means that while you are saved, you are carnal. Uh, I'm coming to get y'all this morning. What did I say? Mike, if it's easy, if it is easier for you to operate in the flesh than it is in to operate in the spirit, it doesn't mean that you're not saved. It just means you're not sanctified. Oh, I know, I know, I know that's a big word for some of you. My goodness, sister, then yes, yes, I know you're saved, but are you sanctified? Come on, put it in the chat because everybody who's saved is not sanctified. You see, save is a one-time thing, uh, but sanctification is every day. Come on, put it in the chat. Uh, Lord, I'm saved, but I need to be sanctified. Come on. Uh, and if you keep falling into the works of the flesh, if you keep messing into the works of the flesh, it does not mean that you're not saved. You ought to shout right here because some of you were trying to figure out, Lord, if I keep falling into this same issue, is it because I'm not saved? No, salvation is not the issue. You, it's sanctification. What did I say? I said, your issue, your issue is not salvation. Your issue is sanctification. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. Ooh, the Holy Ghost shows up not to make you shout. The Holy Ghost shows up so you can be sanctified. Somebody put it in the chat. If I don't shout, if I don't speak in tongues, if I don't run around the building, if I don't holler, if the Lord just sanctify me. Come on, somebody put it Sanctify my mind. Sanctify my emotion. Sanctify my... Sanctify me, God. Oh, my, 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 my. Who am I preaching to? Who am I talking to? Who am I ministering to? That I want the spirit to have full control in my life. So in Galatians chapter 5, Larry, he talks about what the flesh produces that word works means hard labor and he names everything that we do in the flesh he gives it to you and I he shows it in different categories he gives us three categories of the works of the flesh let me give it to you give it back to me and then I'll move along the first category is sexual give it back to me what's the first one the first one is sexual I'm right there I'm right there in Galatians chapter 5 he said now the works of of the flesh are manifested, which are these, idolatry, fornication, uncleanness. All right, I'm reading from the New International Version. It's the best way to interpret it. He named, the first category is sexual category. My goodness. It's sexual perversion. It, it is sexual immorality. It is sexual impurity. He names it. That's in verse number 19. Uh, the second category has to do with religion. Religious. Oh, my God, my God. Jessica, don't miss it. All right, look what he starts off in, chap in chapter 5, verse 19. He starts off with idolatry with the A, and then he moved to verse 20, which is idolatry with the I. And some of you may not be guilty of the A, but you're guilty of the I. Ah, uh, y'all miss it, y'all miss it. So don't you throw no stones just because you never committed the A. We all been guilty of the I. Can I preach up in here? 
idolatry. It is when you put something in the place of where God belongs to. And he said, my goodness, I am a jealous God. And you will have no other God beside me. You can't make your house a God. You can't make relationship a God. You can't make people a God. You can't make religion a God. Some of you have made the church building a God. So that's why if you don't get back to the building, you can't praise God. But is there anybody out there who said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I praise him in my living room. I praise him in my bedroom. I I need somebody to say, my goodness, the building doesn't make me. The house doesn't make me. The clothes doesn't make me. The shoes doesn't make me. If I lose it all and still got King Jesus, I got more than enough. Come on, come on, put it in the chat. Come on, put it. I uh, yeah, many of us, many of us. So the first, the first category of the works of the flesh is sexual. The second category, let me try to keep it with the S's, is sacred. Oh, don't miss it. Sexual or sacred. Look what he said in verse 20. He said there's idolatry. There is witchcraft my goodness there is sorcery oh oh come on come on come on you're saved but you're still reading your horoscope Ooh, i'm coming to get you i'm coming to get you you're saved but you won't even get your face in the book but you've been to a palm reader Ooh, who am i talking to my goodness you want to know your future you don't have to look into your palm just get your face in the book i'm not talking about facebook i'm talking about the b-i-b-l-e that's the book Hello, somebody. There is idolatry. There is witchcraft or what we call in Trinidad voodoo. Sorcery. Spells. Can I preach to somebody up in here? My get it. All of those things. So he moved from the sexual to now the sacred. And then number three, he moves on. And he talks about the third category. My goodness, the third category, which has to do with personal relationships. Here's the third category. Personal relationship. I don't have an S for that, so just drop it. Personal relationship. And he talks about strive or jealousy or discipline. Discord or fits of rage. Uh, ways of ways of people. Every time you get in your car, you in a fits of rage. Come on, let me see you. You don't need to leave your house because as soon as you get on the highway, you are in a fits of rage. My goodness, my, you are what they call them, rage drivers. My goodness, you blowing your horn at everybody. You cut in between everybody. He said, my goodness, there is jealousy. There is discord. There is fits of rage. There is selfish ambition are you reading your bible there is anger and there is dispute my goodness did y'all see and then he closes with the rest of y'all who can find yourself in the first three he said but there is drunkenness (laughs) i'm coming to get you these are the works of the flesh or orgies (laughs) <laughs> Where are you? Who am I preaching to? And don't don't put it in the chat which one, but put it in the chat. I'm guilty of at least one of them. Don't tell me which one, but put it in the chat. I know I'm guilty. I know I'm guilty to at least one of them. I know I'm guilty. I know I know I have messed up in one of them. That's why if there's anything you ought to thank God for this morning, you ought to thank God for grace. Ooh, I feel like preaching right here. I dare somebody to put it in the chat. I got to shout right here. I just got to thank God for grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch. 
like me. Paul says, these are the works of the flesh. And then he gives a warning. Are y'all still there? Let me know you can still, me, still hear me. Put a heart over your head. Brothers, give me some pound or put it in the chat. I can hear you. He said, but those of you, he gives a warning. He said, but those of you who continue to practice those things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Did y'all catch that? He said, if you, he said, look, he said in verse 21, Paul said, those who practice the works of the flesh will not inherit. Don't, don't, don't panic. Don't panic. This verse sounds first like believers can lose their salvation. But we already learned that the believer cannot lose their salvation, Johnny. So what is Paul saying? Paul is saying, number one, those who practice those things is an indication. Number one, they may not be truly saved. Oh, they're not sanctified. Oh, oh, listen, listen, James, I don't want you to miss it. Brother Gardner, I don't want you to miss it. Paul is saying, don't you make the lapse into a lifestyle. Okay, y'all missed it. Can I say that again? Paul says, it's one thing for you to lapse into it. It's another thing for you to make it a lifestyle. Are y'all out there? Give it back to me. Give it back to me. Paul says every believer laps sometime. And y'all know what laps is? L-A-P-S-E. Sometimes we laps into something or we fall into something. But just because I laps into it does not mean it has to be a lifestyle. Ooh, come on, put it in the chat. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I laps. It means I fell into it. It means I backslide into it. It means I fell into it. But just because it's a lapse does not mean the lapse should be turned into a lifestyle. Okay, let me see how I can make it. Paul is saying once is a mistake. Give it back to me. Twice it's a habit. Three times it's a lifestyle. Y'all better give it back to me again. Once is a mistake. Twice is it's a habit. Three times, it's a lifestyle. And Paul said, we all make mistakes. We all got some bad habit. But don't you make the habit into a, into a lifestyle. Well, let me move on. Now, Paul moves from the works of the flesh. Oh, my goodness. I've got three minutes. Paul moves from the works of the flesh to now the fruit of the spirit. And he lists the fruit of the spirit in verse number 22. But, come on, give me the word but. He said, but the fruit of the spirit, notice, it is not in its pure form, but singular. He said, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. Now when we look at the fruit of the spirit, and I will break them down individually next week, but he puts the fruit of the spirit in three categories. Come on, give it back to me. What did I say? He puts the fruit of the spirit in three categories. The first three fruits concern my relationship with God. What did I say? My, the first three fruits, love, joy, peace, concerns my relationship with God. The second three, patience, kindness, and goodness describes my relationship with other people. How many of you, you need patience even when you go on Zoom? Come on. You need patience. Come on. Patience, kindness, and goodness describe my relationship with my spouse, my relationship with my children, my relationship with my dog. Whenever I've got patience, whenever I've got kindness and goodness, I will seek the best of others and put up with their worst. Did y'all catch that? I will seek the best for them and put up with their worst. So the first three, love, joy, and peace, concern my relationship with God. The second three, patience, kindness, and goodness, has to do with my relationship with other people. And the final three, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, has to do with my relationship with myself. What did I say? The first three, 
my relationship with God. The second three, James, look at her and say, you're going to need the second three to live with me. Come on, Jackie, look at Brian. I'm going to need the, I'm, you're going to need the second three. Patience, kindness, and goodness. But then Sue said the last three, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control has to do with how I treat my myself. Ben Kasher, how I talk to myself. Sister Joan Wright, how, how, how I'm faithful to myself. Paul says, you're going to need the fruit of the Spirit. How many of y'all know? I, I, I'm going to need the Spirit to help me to continue to love God. To have patience with others. And I'm going to need me some self-control when I get in the car. <laughs> Father, as we go deeper into the fruits of the Spirit, oh God, we want the Spirit to be manifested in our lives. And we want all nine of them. So would you fill us and refill us and fill us even more. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen and amen and amen. Next week I'm going to pick up love joy peace that song like a good song love joy peace next week i'm gonna pick it up how do i make sure that love joy and peace is one of the fruits that i eat i want to challenge you as we preach in these series of sermon start eating fruits huh five fruits a day keep some disease away but i want to encourage you to start eating some love some joy, some peace. I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you on next Sunday how you can make sure that the nine fruits are evidence in your life. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you were blessed, come on, put a heart over your head. Put it in the chat. Brothers, give me some pounds and say, I got to get me some food. <laughs> I got to get me some food.